Hello, Michael here from Small Robot Studio with another comparison video where we're looking at a couple of different scenes rendered with Eevee, Eevee with SSGI, Cycles, and Redshift. And I'm doing this comparison this week because Redshift has recently been released into Blender, though it doesn't currently have all its features. So for the sake of these comparisons, I'm actually doing these renders in Maya to compare it with their Blender Cycles and Eevee. So this is by no means scientific, so take everything with a grain of salt. Um, I will also say that I am a, a Redshift customer, I've paid for Redshift, so if you want to believe that I've got skin in the game, you're welcome to believe it. If you think that maybe makes me biased, then maybe it does. So let's have a look at the results and you can decide for yourself what looks best and, and what would worst, work best for you possibly. So the first shot we're going to have a look at here is the orange juice. This was very easy for me to recreate in um, Maya and Blender because I already had done it in both. So it was pretty straightforward. Um, you may be asking if you're a subscriber why I'm not comparing Renderman with uh, these other renderers. And the reason for that is because Renderman is currently only a CPU based renderer which means it is significantly slower than EV cycles and redshift and the comparison isn't really fair for the sake of render times. If you want to see the result um, you can see it from the render man tutorial that I did on uh, making a glass of orange juice. Here is a render of the image. It looks very nice but the render times unfortunately are into the minutes rather than the seconds. So the first render that we're going to look at here is Eevee uh, and this is just Eevee at its baseline. The problems that I had with this is uh, based on the reference. I, ref I made this image first in um, render man and then in cycles so it was easy to port it back to Eevee however being a raster based rendering engine doesn't handle glass and caustic super super well I did the best I could to recreate it and also fair warning I'm most experienced with redshift compared to these other renderers so there may be things that I've missed here that could improve these renders looks but um, I am actually I'm fairly competent at using renderers by now and shading so I would say it's reasonably fair across the board so here's Eevee um, we're using 256 samples here and the render time came in at 5.59 seconds so very snappy if you're doing a, obviously an animation this is the sort of render time that you'd be hoping to see or less per frame um, and you'd get a fairly reasonable length animation out overnight if you're wishing to. Uh, this shot here has got subsurface scattering unfortunately again this is a limitation of the uh, engine. Translucency and subsurface scattering I couldn't really get to blend well so we could see that straw through the center there like we can in the other renderers um, but it does an actual reasonable job and depending on what your shot is I think that Eevee is an excellent rendering engine. I particularly think that it has done a really nice job on the uh, reflections on the floor i think that area where the or, uh, where the orange connects with the ground it looks really realistic and and is very believable and i'm quite happy with that and it's dealt with the bump mapping and the specularity well so i think it's it's actually a very reasonable alternative depending on the scenario of uh, what you're rendering let's have a look at eevee with ssgi now i'm going to pop up the settings that i used here i'm using blender 2.9 so i'm using uh, ssgi version it's an alpha version 0.1.2 so SSGI is a sort of fake ray tracing sort of a global illumination plugin that you can get for Eevee it works pretty well considering that it's only in a very early development stage I'm not using the most recent version here because I'm on 2.9 because I wanted to test redshift out with some things so we're using uh, 2.9 rather than 2.91 where we would actually be able to use the most recent version of SSGI um, however, you can see that it's a pretty reasonable result here. It does become a little bit more saturated though, um, which is to be expected when you have global illumination. It will be picking up light rays that have been colored by uh, events around it. And again, it's actually done a really nice job of the uh, occluding point where the orange is touching the ground. And we're actually seeing some nice shadow color there as well. So I really like that. Um, however, again, the glass, not very realistic, subsurface scattering, leaves a little bit to, to be desired. Um, the improvements versus the original EV version uh, without SSGI, I would say are possibly negligible in this render. And 
myself i would probably go for the original ev over the ssdi version um, particularly for the setup and the render time the render time increased from 5.59 seconds to 7.97 seconds so we're looking at roughly two second increase using the same sample rate of 256. these sample rates also i sampled to have the best quality so i didn't just make everything the same sample rate i tried to get it as low as possible for the best cleanest render um, within reason and within reason we're talking about cycles now cycles really gave me a nice result and this is one of the first tests i actually did in cycles we're using a an adaptive sample rate of 16 as the lowest and 128 as the highest and uh, we got a render time of 30.95 seconds so 31 seconds essentially really nice clean render the only thing that i would say is slightly problematic is there's a little bit of color noise in the juice and it's fairly difficult to see so i would say it's mostly negligible you can see if i crop in there though that it does have that sort of rgb noise otherwise i would say that the occluded areas are really nice um, it's picking up nice ground reflection you'll see that the surface material that i've used for the orange is actually fairly specular um, i should, probably should have backed that off um, but overall i think it's actually come up very nicely it's handled the subsurface scattering really well and it was really easy to set up and develop in blender so i really appreciated that i haven't used cycles a whole lot compared to say render man or redshift but i'm finding it very easy to pick up because obviously when you've used one rendering engine there's a lot of things that you can do in with similar work style workflows so you'll find it fairly easy to bounce from one to another and if you want to learn how to render the orange juice like i did here in cycles i have a tutorial available on youtube that you can watch and if you'd like to grab the assets for that they're available on patreon this month for only five dollars and finally we have redshift you'll see that this looks a little bit different um, it's going to look a little bit different just because the way that each rendering engine handles light and color is slightly different so you will always notice a little bit of difference there i tried to get each of them as close as possible but you will find that this one actually came out a little bit more saturated i didn't notice that until i put them all into photoshop and put them side by side uh, that it did look as saturated as, as it did however we'll talk about the samples um, i only used a adaptive sample rate of 4 to 16 and i believe i mentioned this at the beginning but i'm using optus denoising on all of these were available so cycles used it as did redshift um, the performance of redshift was really excellent here only using a very low sample right gave me a very very clean render even if we crop in here you can see how nice it looks the subsurface scattering worked really really well and it gave me a nice translucency so we can see the silhouette of that straw inside the juice there the edge of the juice where it meets the glass um, has a bit of surface tension so it goes up on a little bit of a ramp which is what's causing this darker area that you'll see there and you don't see it in cycles as much so I'm, I'm interested to sort of develop that a bit more but I didn't want to mess around with it too much I just wanted to keep everything as samey as possible without making any sort of allowances special allowances for render engines so you could sort of see the difference so that that I would say I don't really super like that um, I'm sure I could get rid of it if I played around with it a bit but just importing all the geometry and using it with the exact same setup um, you can see that it didn't quite act as expected so that's interesting and worth noting however overall really nice render um, I've, I've been using redshift for a number of years and i've always thought it's been an excellent rendering engine and it's only improved significantly since it got to 3.0 with its addition to blender if you're looking to do more commercial work and you're willing to spend the money i do actually think it's a fantastic rendering engine but if you're very competent with cycles i would say again that it's a also very impressive for a free rendering engine you cannot argue with the results that you get out of it so let's look, have a look at them all side by side here and yeah again probably my favorite would probably be either the redshift or the cycles one i could take or leave either depending on the project honestly i think they both turned up a really nice result um probably i would go with the redshift version for time if i was obviously under time pressure but the cycles version has given me a really nice result so i would be actually fairly happy with either of them i would omit the ev versions having to use glass subsurface scattering doesn't perform super well however the ev version that isn't using ssgi i think the orange came up really nicely and i'd be happy to sort of work with other fruits if i was doing a fruit shot or something like that very fast render time uh, fastest render time out of the lot so 
again, animation, excellent to use it for. So let's move on to a frame that I've taken out of an animation um, that I did recently. This is for the Bum Monsters animation, the first one that came out this year. And I did this whole render in Redshift back in August, I believe it was. Since then, I've optimized it quite a bit better through a lot of testing, and I've also upgraded my graphics card. For reference, we're using a 3070 here, and it's overclocked to 1853 megahertz. It could probably be overclocked a little bit more, but at the moment, um, I'm not needing to push it too hard, and I'm pretty happy with the times I'm getting out of it compared to the 1070. I've got a whole video on that if you want to see it, but obviously, it's a massive improvement. None of that helps us here, though, because we're we're talking about bum monsters and here is the first render this is Eevee rendered just by itself now for this project I definitely would not use this engine uh, it just doesn't have the pop that I'm looking for not having those GI bounces just makes this look a little bit too dull to me I could probably fake it in a number of ways but for what I'm dealing with time wise and stuff I would say that for this animation and the quality that I'm looking for probably wouldn't stand up so in spite of it having an excellent render time 2.52 seconds it just doesn't really stand up visually um, also I will note here there is a weird bump mapping issue uh, that's occurring on the on tongue faces tongue and his body this has happened because the tongue I did in redshift and I did it with a procedural and I didn't actually need to bake it out until I did it and in, in, I transferred it to Blender. So when I baked it out, um, it didn't actually have any bleed and I can't really add that in very easily. I could probably go into Photoshop and do something, but I didn't. Uh, so you will see that uh, seam there and you'll see some sort of wing, weird seam artifacting on his stomach as well. Um, I'm, sh I'm pretty confident that's actually part of the same issue. So please forgive me for that one. Not great, but um, it won't affect the comparison here. So we'll move over into Eevee SSGI. Now I'm actually very impressed with the way this came out the fake gi reflections that each monster is getting on their undersides i think looks really nice a little bit too saturated in places uh, particularly inside of tongue face's mouth um, and maybe some of his under areas have become a little bit too highlighter pink um, but i would say with a little bit of tweaking i could probably get this to a fairly good production standard and if you don't have a choice between say this and redshift um, if, if it's a choice between this and cycles you could probably get away with using this I would say in a fair number of circumstances so the render time for this one added up to 6.67 seconds so very snappy and again with 256 samples anything lower gave me artifacting that it wasn't very nice to look at so um, very fast very reasonable result and I would say with a little bit of tweaking I can get it to a fairly close to production standard uh, depending on what the final render target was. Moving on from there to Cycles, very impressed with what Cycles did here. I think this came up looking particularly nicely. I'm actually happy with the way it adjusted the color or it dealt with the color for Tongue Face. Uh, this color is actually a lot more representative of what I actually wanted him to look like in the Redshift version, but I think I kind of lost my way during the production and didn't reference back to what I initially planned. So you can see there's a little bit of a difference there. Um, so it actually makes me want to go back and fix that and uh, for future projects in this series but again very happy with the render came up looking very nice gi looks excellent something i will point out here though is i don't have light linking because there is no light linking in blender as it currently stands which is a big problem uh, for for production that's a real hurdle i would say uh, using light linking is incredibly important in cg uh, being able to isolate lights to specific objects makes rendering and lighting a lot lot easier if you're happy working in a photographic studio environment where obviously in the real world you can't use light linking then yes you would be able to get a pretty good result without light linking and it's actually kind of good practice i suppose and i kind of found it like a, a nice little challenge to get the shot lit uh, like I had it lit in Redshift without light linking. I think I did a fairly good job. Some of the values here I'd like to change a little bit, but you could do a lot of that in post. So with optics denoising enabled, I used 128 samples and I got a time of 12.96 seconds. Now, when I rendered this originally on the 1070, my render times were about 50 seconds, I believe, from memory. So this would have actually rendered faster in cycles, um, but obviously I'm using a newer graphics card. So hard to compare the two. I wonder if it would have been faster than the GTX 1070. It may or may not have been. 
not using light linking and maybe setting up my lights a little bit differently might have made a difference. Nevertheless, very happy with the result. I think the colors are excellent. I think that the, the way it's handled, the lights are excellent. The materials look really good. I haven't done any compositing on any of these, so there's no after touching or anything. So it's kind of just raw out of the renderer and I think they look very good. And finally, we've got Redshift here. Now the elephant in the room is obviously gonna be the render time. Even with GI on, I got the render time down to 4.27 seconds. This has been heavily optimized though. Um, something that you can do with Redshift is actually optimize your each individual light to have a sample rate unique to each light. So I was able to turn down the sample rate on lights that had less importance and increase them on lights that had more importance, which gave me the ability to render this incredibly, incredibly quickly. So I was only using 16 samples here um, and it was only adaptive between four and 16. So very low sample rate, very clean render. I probably could have increased the sample rate to 32 or 64 and it would look even nicer. And I think in an animation uh, with denoising, I probably would have to, but because I can only compare stills, um, or because I've only really got the time to compare stills, this is probably what I would render at for a production still, trying to get it down to its quickest time, obviously. Um, but yes, uh, I've looked at this for a million, million hours because I obviously worked on it, the animation myself and rendered it out myself uh, back in August. So I'm 100% used to looking at this. It's very interesting to look at the difference between this and the cycles render, however. Again, I will say that even without light linking, the cycles render looks pretty nice. Particularly on Tongue Face, I actually prefer the way that Tongue Face looks on the Cycles render. I think the color is much nicer. I do think that Froggy, which is the blue character, um, looks a little bit better in Redshift. And this is probably a little bit to do with the light linking as well. Though overall, I would be happy with either. I think I could tweak either to look exactly the way I wanted it to as well. Like I said, this isn't to say that either is better or worse than the other. These are just sort of my experiences using the two at the moment. And I'm sure they will change over time. So here are our render times all lined up here. And you will see that uh, the render time between Eevee and Redshift is actually fairly similar. So if I was comparing the two, obviously, I would definitely be going for Redshift in this particular scenario. Even though Eevee SSGI did a very admirable job, I would say. Cycles coming in at 12.96 seconds, again, the longest render time, but a very, very nice result. So not to say that it's done poorly. The only thing that it's doing worse, I would say, than any of the other renderers currently is that it is the slowest, but again, a very reasonable render time overall and probably could be optimized a little bit with a little bit of tweaking. So there you have it, all four laid out for you there, um, just based on their render times. And as I said, I used the sample, sampling rate to give me the cleanest render on each. So obviously I didn't. I used a very low sample rate in Redshift, but higher sample rates on the lights themselves. Some of the light, light sample rates were between 64 and maybe 128, I think, on some of the rim lights, to give me a cleaner rim light. And I will actually do a video about render optimization for Redshift. I've done one for RenderMan recently. I think Redshift can be optimized very, very finely. So look out for that in the future. It probably won't be out this year. Expect it in early January. I think this will be the last video for the year. But hopefully that's been helpful or just interesting or entertaining for you out there. If you haven't used one or more or all of these rendering engines and you have the ability to um, give them a crack. Redshift has a trial version that you can use. It's got watermarks all over it, but it'll give you an indication of what you can sort of expect to see with time and render quality. I used the watermark version way back in 2016, and I was so impressed I bought it that week. Um, again, though, if you are on a budget and you are comfortable with cycles, you can get incredibly good results out of it. And I would say if I was more experienced with it, I could probably get those render times down by a little bit, maybe a third I would, would be my guess. So maybe take that under consideration if you're comparing the three rendering engines. That's it for now though. Um, expect more Blender content in the near future, particularly with Redshift once the plugin becomes more fully integrated. So if you're a Blender user, you can expect to see a little bit of that, as well as Cycles tutorials as well. I've already got that Juice, Orange Juice tutorial and another one uh, integrating Google Maps images into your environment light. So look out for those. Uh, they're already available for you to watch and learn from. And if you want more learning content for Blender, then make sure you're subscribed and you've got notifications on because we'll be doing a lot more going into 2021.